Alrighty, how's everyone doing today? Um, I am back after so long of just, you know, busy with life, um, getting a job. So, uh, today I'm just going to show you basically how to wire two speakers together, particularly a soundtrack speaker. Um, it's, it's not that hard. Just, uh, what I will also explain here in this video is just you know to watch your amperage and what specific decoder and what speaker to get for that decoder which I will show you that at the end of this video how to do it on soundtracks.com because they do have a list um, on their website of what speakers to choose for what decoder you have in your model so today I got a package from Caboose Hobbies or just Caboose I'm sorry just Caboose Lakewood Colorado uh, go ahead and check them out um, I got this Mini-Q speaker from Soundtracks. It's item number 810154, the Mini-Q speaker, 1 watt, 8 ohm. So I'm going to tether this into my current Athern ready to roll locomotive here. With a, uh, I took the stock factory 9 to 8 pin board with the incandescence, placed with LEDs, and put a Soundtracks Economy 2 amp uh, plug and play board replacement just right on top of here. Sounds great. On the inside, I got my pointer. Here, let's see if, well, on the inside here, I got a 16 by 35 oval speaker at one watt, um, which the amplifier on this can do two watts. So you can actually series wire in two speakers. So, but later on when I go to the video, I'll explain to you what series and parallel wiring uh, does to a decoder. So, um, so while we're waiting for my starting iron to heat up, I, uh, again, just being busy with life, but I'm glad now that I'm making this video for those of you who just want to know, hey, how do I series wire a speaker? This is all I've got. I don't particularly mess with low sound. Um, I, I mean, the sound is realistic, but I think the soundtrack sounds better in my opinion. Then you've also got train control systems, their wow sound. I mean, it's decent. I like it. And the low sound I like, but the soundtracks I like better because, one, you just have to do CV number changes. But the my advantages that I have is I got the Digitrax PR3 for linking my local net to the computer. So I can just do it all on JMRI programming with the computer, and it makes it simpler, and I don't have to, you know, have so many gobs of papers around for specific decoders and have to look for about couple minutes just to look for one thing to change on a CV configuration so with that being said I'm actually gonna pause it right here well not pause it but stop this clip now in this following clip in the video we will get to uh, soldering in series so wiring in the soundtracks mini cube speaker all right so let's get to it okay plain obvious is obviously you want to get the speaker out of the package all right I somehow do not know where my X-Acto knife is, so I'm just going to use some random hole puncher, punch a few holes, and rip it open. So, one, two, come on. There we go. And then three. Um, just take a taking my uh, tweezers and just kind of, you know, ripping it out. Boop. Here's a speaker. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, so basically what you got here is this flat part. You take that out, and that's a small square speaker. There's a piece of rubber band around it because this is the baffle and speaker uh, combined. You know what, as far as I know, I know most modelers take the rubber band off and seal it permanently after they get it wired in. Me, it's a different story. I'm just going to keep this rubber band in, and uh, I'm sure it'll sound okay, but if it doesn't, then I will just take it off and seal it up so that it's uh, pretty much permanent. But um, uh, let me show you here with the camera if I can get it off my tripod. There we go. Okay, so I can get it off. I'm going to show you, take a look. So again, you've got my 16, my uh, speaker up here where the dynamic brake fans are. That way the sound can come out. Um, most Athen Raider roller units 
Uh, I can't really, I supposed I wanted to fit the speaker up in front of here, but this is a bit too big than what I thought it was. So, you know, we're just going to stick it right back here, which I'm sure that'll work fantastic. I'll just have to put a piece of electrical tape above here so it does not somehow, if I pull up the model, it won't short out anything if something were to happen. So, um... Alrighty then, so now obviously the next step, I'll wait for my soldering iron to heat up, and then I'll go ahead and solder the speaker. So yeah, well, let's go do that. One quick thing I forgot to mention, for those of you that are kind of new to doing DCC installs, or you just want to know the exact information on the speaker, this was obviously on the background of the package. So this card you want to keep for your future reference. Uh, I don't, because I know what I'm doing, but for those of you who don't really know what you're doing, I'd recommend you keep this because up top it has your dimensions in millimeters. Then it has your frequency response, so 300 hertz to 20 kilohertz of sound. Peak power is 1 watt. Impedance 8 ohms. Now I'll go over watt and ohms here later on in this video after I'm done soldering. And then actually run on the layout and just show you guys uh, how the Sugar Cube speaker benefits both being a bass and reflex speaker. And intertwining with the second one, that way you get optim or you get, I want to say, better sound quality out of that model. So this is real quick uh, uh, clarification I wanted to throw out to you guys here before I start. All right, I don't know if you can see it real well, but I got LEDs on my soldering iron that you could probably see it. What I'm gonna do is uh, take extra caution. I'm gonna unsolder the negative terminal. All right, there we go. Okay, the wire's off. Um, now comes the trickier part. Making sure I got enough wire, first off. Um, so, on a sound decoder, you got speaker positive, speaker negative uh, connections. Okay. Series wiring, you're basically uh, just keep like daisy chaining them all around. So, I got the two speakers. Um, so, let's say series wiring basically takes so 8 plus 8 ohms is 16 ohms don't worry about that you might freak out to say oh that's over the 8 ohm capacity when you series wire it it's less hassle on the amplifier and if they're both at 2 watts this is a 2 watt amplifier so it's not going to be working as hard if you were to let's say have I had a decoder Econami in a steam engine where I had a quarter watt speaker hooked into a two amp economy you know zapped it because one it wasn't as much watts to get up at least halfway of the capacity of that two watt amplifier so um yeah all right so let's uh look at this card here and we'll orient the speaker here accordingly as you see from the two tabs bottom here is positive tops negative okay like I said, I'm going to try to pop it underneath here. Um, so, alright, let's go ahead and do that step next. Alrighty, got an extra length of wire soldered on. Um, I'm going to take some liquid tape. I find this to be more useful than just electrical, plain old electrical tape. Because it actually doesn't like, uh, has like that thickness of the electrical tape. Because some electrical tapes are thicker than others. And it could cause your shell not to go on afterwards. So I just prefer liquid uh, tape. I got this from my local hardware store that now I actually work for in the warehouse. So uh, it's pretty cool now to know that I have been a customer of that store that I work for now. So then all you do, you take, take the brush and this one's got so much that I just want to lightly just dribble just a little bit and then connect. along there and I know that is way too much so I'm gonna take a old paint brush and just kind of um, brush it a little bit more to spread it out along the wire and I'll also double check that I don't have any any 
silver. If I have silver, that means I missed the covering the connection. And just screw that back on. Also, I want to point out that liquid tape is very hazardous if it gets near an open flame, so just use caution. So, alrighty, now on to the next step. Okay, so right here I am basically soldering on the wire right to the speaker, or I'm tinning it. That way it'll make a positive connection when I solder onto the speaker terminal, either the positive or negative. Since I already started with the negative terminal off the decoder, I'm going to wire that on the negative terminal with the speaker, and then put the plus with the minus on the other speaker already inside the engine. All right. Now negative is up top here. So what I'm gonna do. All right. So what I'm doing now is I'm gonna attach the negative to the proper uh, negative terminal on the sugar cube speaker. I gotta be very careful on how I do this. Hopefully you guys are somewhat picking it up. Man, that's hot. Oh, that's way too much. Get off, get off, off. Side note, always make sure you lightly tend the wire leaving the that's siding right iron at, at the most one second and a half making sure the wire is secure to the terminal. Okay. Here we go. Well... Should be alright. Um, now I gotta create a jumper wire. Go to the positive. I'm not really gonna show you guys that. Um, I'm just wanna get this done, put on the layout, make sure it works, and I'll get back to you guys. <laughs> 